Hi, in this slide I want to extend my concept of co-opetition and give you uh, a number of criteria that the team who's creating a database can think about and participate in. And what we're going to say up front is, um, okay, we're, we're going to have scorecards and we're going to use them in a kind of a third way. We could say, all right, here is feedback on how you're doing. Let's think specifically of a sales force. Here are all the numbers for your territory, and here's how you're doing, you know, this quarter versus last quarter, every last year, whatever. Uh, at the other extreme, we say, we're going to put these numbers up on the, on, the, on the wall for everybody to see, and what we're going to do is say, here is the margin dollar uh, percent increase over last year's margin dollar for the each sales guy and for the overall company. So if the company is up year over year 6% in margin dollars, one sales guy is up 35%, and their guy is down 18%, but we don't have any absolute numbers. So if a guy's up 7% on a huge base, that's a sort of a big increase in margin dollars. If a guy's up 35% on a tiny little base, it's still not a lot of margin dollars as far as the overall impact on the company. Well, this is going to, you know, upset, you know, the guys on the bottom for sure. The guys on the top are going to be a little bit embarrassed because maybe half of what is up there is luck or they've got small numbers and it's easy to make a big, a big, a big change. And and what are we putting up there in public for anyway? How how what's how does this help me as a sales rep know that I'm a four or five or six on my way to a ten? And what is a ten anyway? And how do I close the gap? And what should I practice to get better? It doesn't solve any of those problems. So what we want to do is have each team, warehouse, uh, you know, inside sales, outside sales, uh, back office people, and then service processes. In other words, okay, when we look at these service metrics on the wall, they can't be perfect on time if everybody along the process doesn't do what they have to in an accurate, timely way to give it to the next person. Um, so we can have the teams, each team, sort of say, all right, here are the numbers we're thinking about and why we're thinking about them, but how would we present them in a way that's fair? Uh, to what education, continuous improvement, benefit, purpose? Um, you know, how practical is it? Let's try to keep it simple and not over-engineer them and have it crush under its own weight and maintenance costs and so forth. And a lot of times numbers are not the root cause. They're a symptom. So why, 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 why? What is the root, 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 root cause? And we get that insight. What do we do about it? And ideally, I want to have numbers that are intriguing. In other words, it, it tells me, okay, here's how we're doing from a, you know, economic financial ultimate symptom report basis but but here's what's intriguing to me to see the trend improving in this area because if we keep in, improving these inputs at some point we're going to get better sales volume profit outputs uh, from the black box we call our business uh, also when we start looking at ranking reports we have to sort of say well let's let's find and name uh, the actual things that we're lucky so when we look for example at customers uh, and their net profit that we make in those customers for one year, two years ago versus last year, and look at year over year increases and decreases, there's some startling variances, but what's the story behind them? How much was luck? How much was seizing luck? You know, let's give ourselves credit for seeing it and grabbing it. Uh, how much was it because we actually planted seeds, pulled weeds, and watered it, and then, quote, got lucky? Um, so these are, these are things to think about. Um, and what we're trying to do is build our collective wisdom about how the business really works, what the root root causes are and how we manage those and our collective wisdom about what a 10 is and how we move along that path. Uh, we want to sort of be conscious of, you know, well, how intrigued am I? How motivated am I? How, how uh, supported do I feel as opposed to uh, too much anxiety? The, uh, you know, and the guys that come out of the top because they actually are skillful and or lucky, uh, what do they get? We're not going to give them anything. We're going to say, because you are, you know, doing a brilliant job, it, it now as your, as your reward, you get to be a teacher. Ultimately, we want everybody to teach. Eventually, the pe people at the bottom of the report are going to move to halfway of the report, and they're going to be in charge of teaching some new rookie, you know, what they know type of thing, because first-time teachers learn more about what they're doing, and, and it's a catalyst for their own personal growth. So everybody ultimately is going to become a teacher, but certainly the people at the top of the report get more tutoring responsibility. 
Um, and then the bottom 50% can move up enormously. I mean, it's, it's easy to go from, uh, from, a, from a one to a six than it is from a six to an eight than it is to go from an eight to an eight and a half. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a, an exponentially more difficult challenge to keep moving up there at the, at the, at the high altitude levels of eight, nines, and tens. But the truth of the matter is our whole team are, are eights. The rest of the industry is, you know, five in their, in their dreams. They may actually be less. But, uh, uh, and then the top five to 10%, because of all this data and because they are teachers, they're going to wind up having their own questions, their own incremental living edge experiences there to do. And they're going to sense be a living edge for the whole team. And ultimately, a 10 will figure out how to redefine a 10 to a 9 because there's a new new stuff to, you know, that, that now makes you a 10. Good paths are infinite. And the more you know, the more you realize you don't know, which is sort of actually an exciting way, exciting thing if you frame it that way. So those are criteria that the team should consider as they get to fine tune uh, the, the, the job databases that we want to create. Thank you.